So we're back for part two of leaves, line, and value. So when I left you last time, I asked if you would take your drawing skills of the leaves and draw them nicely in an arrangement on your paper, like so. We discussed cropping, going off the paper, variation in size, small, medium, and large, and filling up the entire space of the paper. So, today we want to work on filling them in with color. We're going to use color value. The material you'll be needing for this are colored pencils. I have my colored pencils set out here. You probably want to get the colors that you're going to use and lay them out in order so that they're ready to go. So for value, with a regular pencil, you're going to go from light, when you're barely touching the paper, to medium, where you're pressing down and you're putting a little more weight on your hand, to very, 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 very dark, where you're really putting a lot of weight. Now you can also do this by going over the colors or oh, again and again with the layering to get it nice and smooth, so it's a smooth transition, and it doesn't look like lines that just cut off like this. You want it to be smooth. So you can also do this with color. I'm gonna choose red. Very similar, I'm going from dark to medium to light where I'm barely touching the paper. And to get that smooth transition, I'll overlap and go over it again. So it's lighter here. So you can do this with various colors. If I chose purple. It's the same technique, just different colors. So another way to create exciting colors from light to dark is by overlapping colors that are similar on the color wheel or next to each other on the color wheel. So if I was to choose red, once again, I'm gonna think about what color is next to red on the color wheel. Well, there is violet or purple, and then there's orange on the other side. So what you can do is you can overlap colors that are very similar. So I'm gonna try orange with the red. I'm gonna go over this red here, and then in the middle, same with the orange. And then lighter, I'll do it lighter with the orange. So it kind of brightens it up and it gives it a different look, a different color than the initial red that you have here. You can also add another color because I have like uh, orange here, I could also add yellow. So I'm going to look for the yellow because I did not take the yellow out in my box the colored pencils. And I'm going to apply the yellow where the orange is. Bring that out. That's how you would overlap the colors. You could do the same with yellow and green. Or you could do the same with green and blue. Or you could do the same with yellow and orange, red and orange. Here's an example that I've been using as a guide. It's the gray scale and then it's a color value scale. I've also, before I get started on my leaves, practiced overlapping several times with this piece of paper. It's a good idea to practice the layering and get the feel for what it is to create color value or even value with the grayscale before you apply it to your final drawing. So I'm going to take this aside now and go to the final drawing. Here's my final drawing. As you can see on this leaf, I worked with reds, oranges, yellows, and even a golden color. Here I took some green, dark green. I used a little bit of brown 
Um, this is a lighter green, and then I mixed it with some yellow. So it's a good idea to do it softly at first. As in this one. Let's, what did I start with? Um, with the leaves, I go from the center out, and I go very lightly at first, because layering is very important when you're working with colored pencils. So I'm going from the center out. The center out. I go at a at a at an angle. Now you don't always have to go from the center out when you're filling in the leaves. You could go from one side to the next side. You could go from the bottom to the top. But for this particular leaf, I'm gonna go from the inside out. And I'm doing each part of the leaf separately. I'm not just going across, I'm filling, filling it in all at once. I'm taking my time and doing one piece separately. That's what you would do on each piece of this leaf. So now I'm gonna use, um, let me try this one. This is more of a maroon color. Very similar, I'm going a little bit darker on the inside. I'm gonna put a little more red in there. Maybe go out to the edges with this one, with the red. So with, for this particular leaf, the color scheme that I chose, it's like reds and violets. Red, violet. Because I see a lot of leaves in the fall that are these bright, bright, vivid reds, but they, they, they're deep, deep violets in them as well. So I'm gonna go over that again with the violet. Mm -hmm. Go back and forth. And then with the lighter colors, you can blend these. The lighter colors are good for blending the darker ones that you've already put in. And you'll see that in a minute when I blend these. So I'm gonna go darker on this one, I think. On the inside. And pressing down a little harder. Very carefully putting a darker shade in the middle. Going out. I think I want to add a little bit of this um, magenta color. It's like a hot pink. Jazz it up a little bit, give it a little extra color. Like I said, it's a good idea to experiment with your color blending on another piece of paper first so that you get used to color combinations. I'm going to put a little bit of this ma magenta on the outside here. And before I blend it with the uh, light pink, I am going to go back into the middle again and make it slightly darker. Again, I'm layering, so when I go to blend this, these colors are gonna be so pretty. And these leaves are all slightly different, but it's okay. So I'm gonna take that deep dark Maroon red and go back in here. Get it nice and dark in there. But you can see all these colors. 
And you see how much work I'm putting into just these smaller leaves on the giant leaves. say sometimes it does take a lot of time and effort to create artwork. Okay so now I'm going to go in with the light pink and around the edges I'm going to press down really hard to blend the colors that I already have there. Now if you filled it in nicely you don't leave a lot of missing spaces, like white spaces. It should blend the colors you already have there. The lighter colors are good for blending those. And I go even go over some of the darker ones. So you could apply the same technique uh, for when you're doing all the colors. The yellows with the oranges, the greens with the yellows. You could even do blue with the uh, violet. That would be really pretty. The same type of technique. Okay, so I did these two. I might even go back in and see some spaces that I missed. So when you're done with the leaf, you're going to see these pencil marks on the outside. It's a good idea to take the tip of a pencil, uh, the eraser on the tip of the pencil, and go back in and erase those lines. So you don't, you know, unless you want to outline them with black. But I like it to look more natural, so I like to erase those pencil marks. You have to kind of be careful you're not erasing the pencil, the colored pencil. You could do the same thing with your other leaves. Go right around the pencil, erase those pencil marks. It'll make them look more natural. Okay, so when you have completed erasing all your pencil marks and you have this completed piece of these falling leaves with the vibrant colors, you can leave it with a white space in the background. That's just fine. I think that looks gorgeous. It looks something similar to this side. Or you could add watercolor. If you have watercolor paint at home, put a little watercolor wash. That's the color with a lot of water right in the background. And um, it, it really uh, gives it a special touch if you do that. Okay, everyone. So that is our lesson on leaves in line with colored pencil value. Um, if you don't have colored pencils, use a regular pencil. Do it with the grayscale. Same exact process. Okay, once again, have fun, go outside, look at the leaves, and start creating. See you next time.